Welcome back, Caddy Corner, episode 46. I'm Austin. I'm Caleb. And we are back again with a new podcast. The first thing that I actually want to say is it is the first time in like so long that the weather doesn't completely suck that we've been recording a podcast. Yeah, that is true. It literally rained every day in January, it felt like. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is now February. Is this the first podcast we've recorded in February? Should be number two. Number two? Uh, Who knows? Wait. No, I think it was the 31st. Yeah, I think you're right. This is the first one. Well, shout out to February. Um, <laughs> hopefully everybody's having a good February uh, so far. Um, but today, uh, we're going to be talking about how being a creator has changed us. That's the title that I have. I don't know if you have a better title than that. I don't have you a You don't title. take titles on your notes. I, yeah. Um, basically, we're doing a show about the impacts, both good and bad, kind of, of being a creator so like making this podcast or doing other things that Caleb and I have been doing for like kind of like four years now that's yeah. crazy to think about I haven't I didn't think about that until just now um we're just going to kind of lay it you know just talk about it for a bit and have a little bit of fun and make a little bit of a podcast so uh Caleb I'll give the floor to you pal sounds like a plan to me all right so first off on the list here um these are just some habits that I've kind of like found myself gaining since uh, becoming a creator. Um, but all the ones that I have set are ones that are positive. I don't have any negative ones. So you have to take the stage on, sure. on the negatives. Um, so first on the list, I have set goals. Um, definitely whenever you're creating something, you have to set goals all the time. But uh, I've found myself setting goals with everything that I do, literally everything, no matter if it's like big or small, whatever, I always have the end goal that I set. Um, and I think for me personally, it just kind of helps me realize how it feels to achieve a goal. You know, whenever I set a goal for everything, then I get used to the feeling of like achieving goals and get the set of set of Satisfaction. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Satisfaction every time. So um, that's something that I've found myself doing that I I enjoy pretty good since I've become a creator. Is goals. Fair enough. Um, a similar one for me that I have on my list is um, hardcore construction of a routine. I'm sure that you probably have something similar to that on your list as well. But every day that we talk about it all the time off the pod, like every day that we live is the same pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, like... Tuesday is the day that I record the podcast. Wednesday is the day that I edit the podcast. Um, Thursday is the day that I upload the podcast. That pretty much never changes. Yeah. Um, that's something that has been super hard on or like super prevalent for me really since the pandemic was when it like really became prominent in my life. But even during like 20 that time, like we were making stuff and that was like kind of the start of the growth, exponential growth of us kind of making stuff in general. So Yeah. Hardcore construction of a routine. Now I'm rigid and the worst about having like spontaneous things happening because I don't, very rare that that happens for me because I got to stick to the, I got schedule. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit mine. That's basically the same thing. Um, and it's the same, but I said it a little bit differently. And it's just planning ahead. So everything that you do needs to be planned ahead so that you can minimize the outburst of like badness you know what i'm saying so the things that you're not expecting that you don't want to like put up with those tend to happen more whenever you don't plan ahead so like keeping your routine and making a plan and sticking to a plan that works for you that you've used before then that is how you can minimize those things that are no fun for sure just come up um another one that i think is very uniquely becoming like a creator especially in the digital space is digital organization Mm. so we've talked about this on the podcast a ton uh you can tell a lot about somebody by their desktop dude that's some serious stuff right there yeah like even just a little bit ago like i i have my hard drive is very well organized it's very easy to like look at and find your stuff quickly um even the individual folders like on your computer whether that's your downloads or your documents or your whatever it's important to have those things kind of in order because otherwise you'll never be able to find anything. Not just as somebody who has lots of files, like you and I have lots of files, 
But if you're a student in any way and you need to find that essay that you, you need to find that rough draft or whatever that you exported like a week ago and you don't keep an organized digital space, good luck, buddy. There's no chance you're finding it unless you know exactly what you named that file so you can search it up. But there's slim chance of that. So that's definitely something that I've adopted really since college, but I mean, you know, still making stuff then. And that's been like the best thing ever because I can just, I can, I know I can set up my computer at any time. And I know where everything is. Yeah. And that's the best thing. And, and that's one thing that they like don't teach you because like we took classes that were kind of doing like the same type of thing in school, but they never taught us how to organize it, you know? And so that is kind of one of those things that we had to pick up on our own. But I will say that I kind of enjoyed that process of like organizing oh dude it's awesome it's like therapeutic almost it's so good um and i got that like feeling digitally but now i i organize everything Mm -hmm. so like at work i make it my 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 duty every day to like go and organize something and it just feels so good whenever you like you're organizing stuff and now you know where everything is and after you finish organizing something you just take a step back and look at it in all of its beauty. Yeah. And you're like, this is magnificent. <laughs> this looks so cool, yeah. you know, and, and uh, all your hard work paid off. Yeah. But I digress. Then you come in next day and it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is true. Um, but the next thing that I have on my list is research. Dude, I research all the time, especially for the type of stuff that we make every week. Yeah. Yeah. And not even, not even just that, but definitely that too. Uh, Every week we do a podcast, if you didn't know, and every week we have to come with notes, if you didn't know, and so we have to do research for those, but like all the time too, if I just come up with like a random question in my head, then I'll I'll type it in in Google and then next thing you know, it's like I I could be an expert on it because I just (laughs) I just read so much, you know, or if I if I'm stuck doing something like just just this past week i got stuck doing some some short vertical clips and and i had to turn to youtube to help you know but those are the type of things that that you pick up whenever you have questions you know and you need to answer fast and you can't like go find an expert or whatever then just turn to the resources because the resources are there there's so many of them and they're all there to help you out so take advantage of them and and do your research Great point. Um, something that I think is, it definitely flies under the radar for people who are like content creators or pay attention to social media in any kind of way. We talked about it a little bit on the last week's podcast, which is the social media episode. Check that out. But I always, I've always referred to it as media literacy. Um, we talked about it, like I said, on the last week's podcast, where when we see like these very clickbait headlines, we know that it's a clickbait headline. Most people don't. That's the reason that they click them. Um, and that's what media literacy is. We can see through the like business first BS of media companies, especially news. News is the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can see through all of that. Like I watch TikToks all the time, and I think you made this just to get the likes off of this video, or just to get the views off of this video. And there's just little things that you can see like that. Whereas other people are just kind of oblivious to that, and then they could just think that a video is like a lame video, or that they could click on their you know very clickbaity news article and then be upset whenever their question's not answered at the end. Whereas we just wouldn't click on the article. I think that that's a, it might be like a Gen Z skill, but I think it's important. Makes your life a lot easier. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, the next thing that I have on my list is focus on quality. Um, quality is better than quantity every time. And one thing that I've learned, especially with like making videos and stuff is that the length of the video doesn't matter you know like whenever you're in school and or with anything if you have like uh like some things that you have to meet so like if you're writing a paper and you have to write um a thousand words or if you're making a video and it has to be five minutes or whatever you know you you find yourself feeling like the space where you don't have the information to like actually right. fill the space, you know? So you start like rewording sentences to where it makes it longer. So you add like these places where it doesn't matter, you know, where if you were to read that, then you'd be like, this feels unnatural, you know, cause it's like, these are not my words. I wouldn't sure. talk like that, you know, or 
whenever it comes to a video, you're like, why did I add this in here? Right. Hit this, a quick B-roll montage. Yeah, this this doesn't fit here. You know, this doesn't look good right here. This is way too long because I just needed to like Build get to time. yeah get to this time point. You know, and so I think that one thing that I've learned creating like on my own is that the time is not what matters because you can make a a two minute video that is like well informative and is powerful yeah and made very well you know very clean and very like just a good quality video and then you could watch that same video that was 10 minutes long that has the same information you know but it's drug out and and they're like tiptoeing around points trying to like get a like right. you know to make, make it a, a 10 minute make video loop de loops around just to like say the same thing that you said in your two minute video and it's like yeah okay cool you edited a 10 minute video but like this video the transitions are crappy the information is not clear you know so just Focus on the quality instead of the quantity because, like like I said, whenever you're in school, they, like, f really push quantity, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and, and it trains your brain to, like, use filler words, you know? Yeah. Whenever I talk, I say the word like all the time because if Beat you... Beat into your head. Over yeah, it. if you're doing a speech, you know, you have to get to that five-minute mark. I've never thought about it like that. You know? Yeah, I think that that's a genius. And so, uh, quantity yeah. is, is more important than quality. My rule uh, wait, has... I said that wrong. Quality, quality is more important than quantity. My rule has always been as short as it can be, or I'm sorry, as short as possible, but what did I say? I don't know. You said something like... It was like very profound, though. It was very Yeah, good. it was like... It was like your stuff needs to be as long as it needs as long as, long as it needs to be, but, but as short, short as possible. possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And that's 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 so true. That's how so, I feel. Yeah. So so good. Yeah, definitely. Uh maybe I could remember it next time though. That would be a good strategy. Um something else that I think has come from being a creator is, at least for myself, I have this much more developed, I think, appreciation for like art forms in any kind of way. Um, something that I always say whenever I see something like that is like somebody had to make that thing that you're looking at or you're watching or even like you're playing, like if it's a video game or if it's like, if it's like Uno, like somebody had to invent Uno, you know what I mean? Somebody mm -hmm. created Uno. And so, I mean, obviously everybody doesn't get to like look at a YouTube video and analyze it and, or even look at like a movie and be like, that was a sick low, low angled like low shot Dutch angle shot, you know what I mean? But you can still kind of appreciate the art form of anything that you make and realizing that like most things are art is like an important, you know, kind of thing to think about it. Like this iPad is art. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like there's design choices that were made for a specific reason, whatever that reason is, whatever, but there's like an appreciation that goes along with that. And I think that that comes a lot from, I mean, cause you have the same thing where it's like you've you know what it takes to make a video so you have the appreciation for that like i'm the worst to watch movies with because i'll be like that was a sick transition <laughs> like i'll do that the whole time if i'm like not at a movie theater or whatever so i've definitely developed that i was not that way whenever i was like early on in high school but i am now so yeah i think that's so that's so true because like i feel the same way i can't watch a movie without like finding shots that i I think I'm sick, copy that, yeah. you know, it, exactly. It's like yeah. you see something and then it's like you get the inspiration from that. And then it's, you know, and, and dude, all the time, literally, because the, the question of like, what is art, you know, is such like a profound question that sure. like you can't answer because like you said, everything is art. You know, if you just have the conceptual thought behind it, like this table, you know, yeah. it's just a table, like it works, you eat here, right. but there's a reason it looks like this. Right. Like somebody made it specifically for, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's super, super sick to think about. Um, and then I just have one more uh, little point here, and it is keeping your mind on the end goal. So I find myself a lot getting stuck in the now, you know, whenever like I'm doing a project or whatever and kind of straying away from like what the end goal actually is and so and I don't really know like why or how to like fix it you know but I guess just you have to remember what your end goal is 
all the time. So like whenever you're making a project or whatever, instead of focusing, like if you're making a video, instead of focusing on the scene that you're editing right now, like think about things like how is this going to tie into like the end for sure, you know? And so like, those are things you have to think about. Like something that I have to do in photography all the time is if I'm doing a photography project, you know, I can't just go and like shoot random things. Like I have to think conceptually about every photo and be like, how is this going to tie into the theme, like overall theme of this project that I'm creating or whatever. And so remembering what the end goal is all the time can help you not like stray away from the actual end goal. And then, you know, lose time because you just started like walking around the park shooting like leaves or whatever and the project was supposed to be about like you know surfboards yeah not leaves (laughs) you know so uh i think that that's super important i think that it's very hard to do that without a team slash a extra set of eyes because it's very easy to especially as if you're making anything solo that's like grandiose like it has like a big idea if you will it's very hard to like stick to that on your own because you can get so in the weeds on like the the crap you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like is this audio at the right level it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things you know what i'm saying like yeah. you're gonna do a final pass where you can adjust everything you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that's a good point for sure i think you'll never get anything done if you always just worry about the little things you'll never upload the video you'll never post the podcast yep so you never you'll never turn it in if you're never you know happy with it because i don't know i would assume at least that every time that we've made a video at least for me even there were things I turned it in and I was like, there's things that I would still change on this video, but I just don't have the time or mm-hmm. whatever, or, or it's fine. You know, I remember whenever I made my friend's intro, the, that I couldn't get the text to move forward in the thing at the right speed. And I was like hyper obsessing over it. And then after like 45 minutes of trying to do that, I was just like, this is a 48 second video. Who cares? It doesn't even matter. You know, and I'm sure you've got situations that are similar to that. You know? Yeah. I, I feel like, like everything that I've ever made, or especially everything that I've ever turned in for school, every time I watch it on the screen or like look at it on the screen, I'm like, man, I should have done this differently. And like things that I was not thinking about whenever I was editing, you know, things that I should have been thinking about, but things that I wasn't thinking about. So like for an example, uh, I just submitted a photography project and I had this picture and it was, uh, uh, it was a Christmas tree kind of like with the fake snow on it yeah and then it was sitting in front of like an old holly bush but in the photo i had it framed to where there was a corner of like the top corner of the screen was just white and uh like looking at that after like while i was what like presenting my project you know i was looking at that and i was like what right. what was I thinking? Yeah. You know, like why did I leave that there? You know, and just things like that that I wasn't thinking about whenever I was shooting, and it, like I wasn't being as intentional as I needed to be. You know, but there's always things that you would go back and change. Like if I could retake that photo, like of I course. would totally just frame it to where the whole background was the holly bush. You know, and there was no sky that was right. distracting you, because like the photo was like super sick. Yeah. If if that was if that corner wasn't there, yeah, you know, if that was fixed, but yeah. Whenever. You live and you learn. For sure. You just can't hyper obsess over those like little things, you know? Yeah. Especially in the end stages of your project. All right. My last kind of point here that is like a pro of, of what being a creator has kind of done for myself is self-motivation. Um, I think it's probably the single biggest one for myself at least um, because now in pretty much all aspects of my life, I do everything because I want to do that thing. I go to college because I want to. I enjoy being a student. I make this podcast because I want to. There's nobody making me every day do this podcast. And the same thing with you. You know what I mean? Um, Whereas before, and even before the podcast too, the podcast has helped a lot with this. um, I've always thought like, let's make something. Let's make a YouTube channel. Let's make a podcast. Let's make a blah, 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 blah. But then like almost a year ago, like we actually did it. Probably like close to a year ago, this started incubating, which is interesting to think about too. But, like, I was, what, I was 19 at the time? And so then you kind of get this mentality of, like, I can do it, so why not do it? And then you start doing it, and then you snowball, and next thing you know, like, we've made 70-something combined episodes of the show or whatever, and that's all based off of our motivation to do it or whatever. And that's come in a lot of different ways. Um, I've been doing my TikTok series, which has been, like, 37 days strong or whatever now, completely self-motivated. Like, I just wanted to make... TikToks, and so I've been doing that. Um, 
coming just from, like I said, my own kind of motivation. I think that that's super powerful whenever you can make decisions to do things that are like difficult or challenging or take up a lot of time or require a lot of thought. If you can do those things because you want to do them and with nobody else like pushing you along, I think that that's super powerful for your yeah. whole life. Oh, yeah. It it makes things a lot easier on you, you know, and especially if you're like you're not in school anymore and it comes to like working then that is what companies look for. Like they look for employees that don't have to be told like, Hey, go do this, Mm -hmm. go do this, go to this. You know, like if you finish a task and and you're not like right onto the next thing, then, you know, you're just wasting time. But that's where the self motivation comes in because it's really easy to like finish something and be like, okay, I'm going to take a break now. Yeah. You know, instead of being like, oh, okay, I'm finished with that. Now let's like go ahead and knock yeah. the rest of it out so I can call it a day, you know? So I think that's super important. I think yeah. too, self motivation makes it a lot easier to like love the suck. Like, I, there are so many times where I've been up at like midnight. Like, I got Final Cut here and I got a YouTube window here and I'm trying to learn how to mask this text or whatever. Like, that sucks, man. Like, it's bedtime, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I need to go to sleep, but it's like, I got to learn this because I want to. And there's a lot of other elements that are like that, too, across all different aspects. But yeah. And that one has bled over to a lot of things. You know, a lot of a lot of the like positive habits that I've constructed for myself over the past like year and a half have come from like self motivation, like doing it because I wanted to do it rather than like going to the gym because one of my friends was like, Hey, let's be gym partners and I was like, All right, you know, like I just did it myself. And that's like powerful because you don't ever like lose it because it's like internal. Yeah. Anyway, not to harp on it for too long. That that I think is like super powerful. Um my next section is my like reality section. You want me to go for that next? Yeah, just okay. go for it. So when I wrote these, I have three of them. And these are just kind of, I didn't want to put like a good things about being a creator section and then like a bad things because I felt like that was kind of harsh. Um, and I also think that these like realities, which I wrote them as realities because they were kind of just like things that I've recognized have changed a lot in my life that would push some people off of the like trail of wanting to be a creator or whatever. So These are kind of up for interpretation, but I thought they were worth mentioning. I've definitely noticed them in my life. So the first thing that I wrote here is that your priorities won't align with other people's a lot of the time. Um, We, well, at least for me, I spend a ton of time like working on the podcast, working on other forms of content or whatever. That's like the bulk of my week, you know, between that and school and work or whatever. But like, A lot of my time is spent doing that. And so there isn't a lot of time whenever you consider the mass population of people who are 20 years old that are doing the same thing as myself. Um, And whenever your priorities don't like perfectly align or even like really closely align, because there's not a lot of people who are like our age who are like, you know what I'm going to do on like a Friday night? I'm going to sit at my desk and I'm going to crank this podcast out or whatever. There's not a lot of people who are like willing to do that. But if you are, then you don't like your priorities, your priorities don't align. And then you're kind of not the, whatever the standard 20 year old American kid mold, which a lot of people can't handle that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people's like reputation or I don't know, like social currency is very important to them, which I understand. Um, but that's something that you can't really have as a, somebody who's going to do really anything that takes a lot of time on the side, whether that's a business or you love to paint or whatever. Um, you can't really do that. You have to stick with what you're prioritizing. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that, I mean, that's super real. I'm sure you've had similar things happen for you. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's very real. Um, the next one that I have here is that you have kind of by virtue of your priorities, not really aligning with the vast majority of the rest of the population is that you have lots and lots of alone time. Um, again, a similar example is like you sat at your desk, you're working on a video or whatever. Typically, at least I've never had this. Maybe you have have like a co-pilot, like a little motorcycle seat, you know, like a sidecar or whatever. I've never had that on my desk chair or anything. Yeah, No, I've um, never, I've yeah. never installed one of those no, before. Yeah. So, um, you know, typically, and it takes a while. I'm sure you spent a while on your clips. Um, it takes a while to do the podcast. You know, you're sat there for a while and that's every week. And that's just one project, you know, like if you've got a big, I don't know how long it took you to do your doc. Um, but a while, you know, and you spend yeah. probably most of that time alone in headphone land, like mm-hmm. you're just locked in. Yeah. Um, 
So you have to be okay with that. I know a lot of people who just don't do anything on their by, by themselves. They can't like go and eat by themselves. They can't do whatever by themselves. As a creator and as somebody again who's really just anybody that's doing something that takes a lot of time on the side, you kind of have to get over that. You know, you got to be able to like sit down and lock in, and you're gonna not be on everybody else's schedule either, just because you know you got your own stuff going on. So that's an important one as well. And then the last part that I think kind of ties into the rest of them too is that your free time is pretty sparse um, between, you know, the podcast, all of the other kind of different kinds of content that you can make between shooting the podcast, planning for the podcast, uh, researching how to get better at editing, how to do clips, stuff like that. That's a lot of time in the week in the week to where free time, whatever that means for you, isn't something that you just have all the time. Um, and there's really no way to like get that. And that exists for every like career path or anything that's like, you know, requires a lot of time input or whatever. But that's something that I've definitely noticed is like in my week, I don't have that much free time between like work and the, and the podcast and whatever. And so if you're somebody who really loves their free time, then that's a reality check that'll hit you real quick because you filled it up with making a podcast or whatever else Mm -hmm. that you do in your life. And that's the reality checks that I've got written down. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. That's a that's a super eye opening, you know, because if somebody is, it's a lot of people's dreams to be a content creator, you know, and like a lot of people like strive for that, and and that is like their goal, you know. But I feel like a lot of people wouldn't be in the on on friday night instead of being at the football game with your friends like sitting in the student section being like in your bed with a like your hair looks awful you got yeah. like a crusty sweatshirt on just mm-hmm. going to town yeah. yeah exactly and so like but those things are that's that's totally real yeah. like that's that's what has to happen you know because to make anything or like to be successful in any any kind of form you have to make sacrifices you know and and sometimes the sacrifices are not sacrifices that you want to make, you know, and, and sometimes it's ones that you're not willing to make, you know, mm-hmm. so you just have to be honest with yourself and be like, am I really going to like put the actual time into this? You know, right. like whenever we were creating this podcast, that's one of the questions that we had to ask ourselves. We were like, are we really like, is this real? Yeah. You know, are we really going to do this? Is this like going to be a real thing? Are we going to stay committed? You know, obviously we have. And, uh, I think that our work shows for that, you know, but some people would not be willing to like take hours out of their week every week to like post something online, you know? And so that is, uh, something you just had to be aware of. Definitely. Um, so I have some closing points that I'm going to hit real quick. It's really just one point. Um, and that is whenever you're creating, anything on any spectrum whether it's painting or sculpting or digital media or whatever whatever you're creating you have to create healthy habits so like you have to create habits like these that you can stick to you know um when you're creating um so like you have to be able to set goals you have to be able to research you know you have to be able to plan ahead whatever else so like you have to be able to do all those things whenever you're working. But one thing that I would recommend, and I'm sure you would too, is instead of just having those habits, whenever you're working, like just move them into your daily life too. Because I think one of the most important things as a creator is you're like creating life has to be like all the time, you know, like my creative brain does not stop. Yeah. You know, like, even whenever I'm sleeping, you know, I'll wake up with ideas, you know, I have to write them down because I'm half asleep, you know, yeah. but it's like, like those things are still working. And that's one thing that I've like trained my brain to do is like to find something in everything, you know, find some type of inspiration in everything. And whether that be a song, a movie, a painting, a going to dinner, you know, a piece of wood, yeah. like literally anything, just like finding inspiration in that and realizing that 
this is like something that could be more than what it is right now. And so that is one of those things that like creating those habits and like bringing those habits into my everyday life have totally like changed me as a creator, but also just like as a human, Yeah. because my respect for like everything kind of like you said, it's just like so much different now because like right now I'm literally looking at like this cardboard olive garden bag you know yeah. but like instead of seeing like a cardboard olive garden bag i'm seeing like the dude who like designed that logo you know which just the, thinking about it yeah it's yeah. Just, like those are the kinds of things that like you think about whenever you like bring these things into your everyday life i think that's so important for sure i think too kind of on that same point that you just made is like a lot of the habits that i have in my like creative process or whatever really what they come down to is like time management uh physical and digital organization and um like always being actively doing something which is kind of what you just described um i've brought those habits into my everyday life and they've impacted it in a way that is not strictly making videos or whatever it's also benefited me in every other aspect because i look at the gym the same way that i look at making videos which is that it has to be done um and how are we going to do that in an efficient way that you don't end up hating you know what i mean like when whenever you do kind of anything like it's not incredibly fun to sit like to convince yourself to sit down with full intentions of like editing a video that's going to take you like six hours to edit that's not really like a fun thing to convince your brain to do in the same way that it's not super fun to convince your brain to wake up at like 6 30 in the morning to be at the gym at seven but you just have to get over it and do it for like the greater good or whatever that that mentality for me at least has spread to a lot of aspects of my life and that's i think the point that i want to make the most out of what you said was like those positive habits that really came from being like a creator i guess impacted my the rest of the parts of my life in like positive ways too when it comes to like building better habits and stuff yeah and then i also think too like the subject matter of our podcast has helped that a lot too with the research and stuff Mm mm-hmm I said I thought of I was listening, I've been listening to a lot of Joe Rogan and he said that which I think is interesting and I think it relates to me a lot and that's also on like a much like a much smaller scale but he said that like through his podcast of like two thousand episodes or whatever he's got like this very um, accidental it like very in depth education because he's had like so many like smart people on the podcast and I feel like I've had the same thing in forty six episodes you know yeah like a very indirect. Um, education on things that I didn't know a lot about before we started doing the podcast. Yep. So, which is interesting, you know, because that exists in everything. Like if we were making comedy podcasts every week, then kind of by virtue of that, we would be funnier human beings off the show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how that works too. Yeah. But um, that's kind of all I've got. Yeah, me too. Fantastic. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, that was Caddy Corner episode 46. Uh, I don't really know what we're going to title it yet, so I will refrain from calling it anything uh, yet so that that way I don't, uh, shoebox myself in which would not be great um make sure to first of all check out pretty much every podcast that we've ever done uh because we make cool stuff uh if you're on youtube shout out to you guys um make sure to like and subscribe and comment and ring the bell and uh check out all of our all of our other podcasts uh most recently we did social media um and kind of did like a deep dive on how that affects you as a person. And then we also did the Bailey Graham podcast. So if you're interested or uh, interested in those, scroll down just a little bit and they're right there. Um, if you're on the audio platforms, uh, what's up? Shout out to you guys. Um, write and review the show. We really appreciate that. We read all of our reviews uh, on the show. Um, at least we try to, especially at pace. Sometimes it's difficult because we aren't paying attention. Uh, we should get notifications for that, I think. But that's for another time. Um if you are interested, we also do a show called Caddy Corner After Hours where Caleb and I are a little bit less buttoned up and we just kind of talk about whatever we want to talk about for however long we want to talk about it. Um, then if you're interested in that, audio only. And again, if you're on the audio platforms, just scroll down one. If you're on the if you're on YouTube, uh, the link's in the description. Uh, I'm Austin. He's Caleb. We're back every single week, 8 a.m. Eastern for, I guess, everything that we post pretty much. Um, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Thank mm-hmm. you.